I don't think they're advertisers, so we can talk about it. Uh, the the mouse that kills other mice. Yeah, it's it's like a pig eating bacon. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. You remember that it's restaurant on Roswell Road, Ribs, etc. Yes. They used to have uh, on the walls. Kids could draw. You know, they gave them crayons and shit, and they could draw, and they would hang them on the wall. The one that I always loved was some kid drew a, a conveyor belt. And on the conveyor belt were smiling pigs. And on the other end of the conveyor belt were ribs. <laughs> <laughs> and a little kid drew it. And that little kid grew up to be Army Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Army Hammer. Boy, they're canceling him like uh, like he's in all the MLB All-Star game. So you were asking me what, Steph, about the mouse that... No, I was just wondering if you had seen that mascot. Yeah. And, you know, the triple X. I just... I mean, it looks cool. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense that they're just, in, I guess you, they enlist the help of their people. Yeah, that mouse is them in. George Soros. <laughs> you know, you have to look that joke up. I'm not going to explain it. But yeah, he is a mouse that uh, kills mice and rats. And uh, he's just basically a traitor so he could live and, and be on billboards and get all that sweet mascot money. Fucking mouse. Doesn't care, doesn't care about his, his brethren. Uh, speaking of which, we had an ant infestation in our bathroom. Mm -hmm. oh, those Dustin little, probably knows that's hard to get rid of. Those little piss ants. So I went to Walmart and I got the liquid uh, ant bait and uh, I put it down. And then about an hour or two later, I went back into the bathroom and there were thousands of them crawling in, in and out of that thing. And then uh, this morning I went in and uh, there were no ants, just a bunch of them dead in the uh, thing. How long will that last, Dustin? Well, they won't come back anymore if there's not a water source. That's what they're looking for. Really? Looking for water. Yeah. And But that will kill them, and it probably killed their pheromone line that led all the rest of them in. So when they left, they probably won't come back there. They might come back another place. Uh, like best, thing to do is, best thing to do is, is uh, get some stuff and do the perimeter of the house, just like around the like like granular stuff and you can spread it just literally around the base of the house and it'll keep them from coming in see pest control you don't get that for free on a lot of podcasts I swear, I swear by having a pest control we've been we've had it ever since we moved into this house we were here for about two months and i opened up the closet and i thought that it was a i don't know a house shoe but it was a spider <laughs> <laughs> and um we called them out and that was it we they come out every three months i don't say we're never see shit in here well K K caitlin and i are our our uh, pest control um guy oh well our pest control method is prayer <laughs> it hasn't worked is it true oh. that you swallow you swallow 36 spiders a year in your sleep i don't think the number is that high but yes you do swallow a number of them How? Yeah, i don't think it's that many they but, crawl in your mouth they crawl on your body while you're sleeping why don't tell me that. <laughs> I, I, I swallow like nine or 10 of them while I'm awake, just so I won't swallow so many while when I'm asleep. You swallow microscopic uh, tadpoles, but you do that when you're awake, voluntarily in a basement someplace. <laughs> hey, Steph, what's up with that mug? Chipping Jimmy. <laughs> well, yeah. Jack, look at <laughs> it. It's so busted. It. Well, I'm running the dishwasher right now, so all of the good cups, all the ones that we fight over are in the dishwasher. <laughs> Oh, you're speaking of which, we got our dishwasher. Our kitchen's done. I have a, oh, congrats! Have a dishwasher and a new stove. We haven't had a dishwasher ever. We've lived here for four years. So Are you kidding cool. me? No, we had when we moved in. the The people that owned the house before us left their, you know, the the portable dishwasher, the one you push on wheels, and we used it once, but it's a pain in the ass. Mm. And, you know, it fills your sink with dirty shit. Uh, but we, we we got it. We got these new quartz countertops and we got a refrigerator with an ice thing in it. I'm so happy because I love ice, <laughs> but uh, I'm an ice guy. I can't 
I have to have cold drinks, but no, it's exciting. I mean, I never thought I'd be excited about um, appliances. I'm like, eh, as long as it cooks, I'm like one of those people that would let his kitchen get I me. Mean, Jeff knows I would let my kitchen, uh, you know, just grow mold on shit. I mean, it's how I grew up. Caitlin has completely domesticated you. And that's good. That's a good thing. Well, I wouldn't call it that. I mean, got to be another term for it. Civilized, maybe. <laughs> You can come over and do my dishes. My dishwasher's broken. They ordered me a new one. They said it's going to be a month. A month? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a shortage because of the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Stuck in the Suez Canal. <laughs> All right. Enough of that. This isn't the uh, the home fix it podcast. This is well, but speaking of pests. Sometimes your your house gets infested with pests. Sometimes. Uh, the world gets infested with gigantic pests known as titans. So I wanted to start off talking about Godzilla and King Kong or Godzilla versus King Kong and see if you guys watched it and what you thought of it. I want to hear what Dustin thought of it because he texted me after he watched it and said he hated it. Oh, no. I want to hear about this. Weird because I liked it, but I liked it a lot, too. Steph, you didn't see it, right? I have not seen it yet, but that's why I was like, I'm, I'm sure the plot is not going to be a problem for me. So just you guys go for it. I right. just want to see the fights. Dustin, Dustin. Did, did you make popcorn? Did I make popcorn? Yes. Okay. Because I made popcorn and I enjoyed the hell out of it. So what? What? what did, I didn't make popcorn, but I liked it also. What is popcorn? <laughs> well, did you make it? Okay, never mind. Well, first, first thing I found yeah, out was I need, because... I need to make a retraction from last show. This was not directed by Garrett at... Um, Edward, it's directed by Adam Wingard. Okay. So it was a different guy. The Adam Wingard is the, and I know who that is. It was the guy that made that movie VHS a few years ago, the independent movie that did so well. Um, but they it also gave, great. they also, uh, he did the guest, he did the remake of Blair Witch Project um, that was out a few years ago, the year next. So I mean, he's, good? Uh, your next was pretty good. Uh, the remake of Blair Witch was not. I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, Blair Witch. I mean, on second, if you watch Blair Witch now, it isn't as good as it was when it came out because you know, a you're not shocked, but b it's just like okay, stop moving the fucking camera. We get it. Well, yeah, everybody did it so much that it's you know you can't really. It's like watching the Matrix. You know, everybody yeah. did the bullet time afterwards, so it looks makes it mean. But he also did Death Note, which I did like. Um, but you know, this one I thought it was. First off, the whole beginning with King, and, and this is going to be some spoilers for everyone. Just while we're talking okay. about it, I'll try not to do you know all of them, but spoilers, spoilers for Godzilla versus Kong. Spoiler: the beginning, I didn't really care for. I didn't like right off the bat King Kong's morning routine that with music. It just seemed a little. What's his morning, morning routine? Is he yeah. like shit and shave and like a whole yes. thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm mean, yeah. Gets up. Get you know. Gets up. Goes takes a shower. You know. Goes and pesters the people that are holding him uh, on the island in this giant dome. Um, and which makes. I mean, which following the storyline does make sense. Why he didn't show up in uh, King or the Godzilla King of the Monsters when all the other Titans, you know, were merging. Uh, you know, he was he had been trapped in this giant biodome over a section of Skull Island. And they've did mon monarchs been monitoring him, you know, all these years since the movie. Since I'm probably sure. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, I mean, it, it, everything. It was kind of like they just they had a law a lot of story to get through, and it seemed very. All the cuts were real quick. I mean, he was on the island. He was he was being taken somewhere. Everything yeah, that was, was weird when he was. He's on the island. All of a sudden, he's on the boat. Yeah, and with no explanation or showing how they did it, the scale bothered me once he got on the boat. I mean, he the size that he was in Skull Island versus I mean, I granted aircraft carriers are massive. I've been on one, they're huge. But for both of them to be fighting on one just kind of diminishes the size of both of them. So scale for me was completely off. Right. Um and Godzilla ultimately should be able to pick up a aircraft carrier like out of the ocean with his hand, right? <laughs> Right, not use it as a as a swimming dock, you know, <laughs> it, it, which is what they were doing. It was like two kids <laughs> fighting on a swimming dock in the middle of the summer. Right. Um, one of them can't swim and is staying on there, and the other one is, you know, pestering him. 
And, you know, so the special effects were great. I think that that trailer that they put out of, of that actual uh, fight was the best looking polished piece was there. All of, all of the other fights and what I, I've, I've been thinking about since I watched it was whether it was planned to try to look, you know, 50s gitchy about the you know the it looked there were honestly to god I, I almost threw up when it looked like there was two guys fighting in suits wow. and and that's what it looked like because there was no you know when something is massive the way to relay that it's massive is to the speed of which it moves yes and they didn't do that in this i mean they're they're fight they're moving real time and when you make something that large in a setting move real time it looks fake yeah. Or it looks, you know, it looks like a man in a suit. So that was really, you know, the whole, every time they would fight in the city, it just seemed like a bad, you know, Power Rangers episode. Um, I mean, the special effects look good when, when, the, when you get down to specifics, but overall it just seemed a little, a little hokey. Hmm. That, that whole city fight that the entire time, I'm just thinking there's another 10,000 people dead. Yeah, me too. And there's I'm, another 10,000 people dead. <laughs> And how how much is it going to cost to rebuild the city? <laughs> that building, and wow, that was a cool building. But yeah, like ten thousand, and he's just stepping on shit and throwing <laughs> the buildings at him. And it was did you ever think about that when you were a kid? Did you no, ever never. think about uh -huh. any of that? No, no, the more you get, the better. When you're a kid, yeah. <laughs> hey, I got twenty with one step. Did you didn't like Mecha Godzilla? No, oh. no, not at all. No? Oh, oh god, it, it, it just. It, I knew when when he saw that when he when he saw the uh, the podcast guy when he snuck in and and saw what was going on and he saw that pink orb. Uh -huh. I that knew at that point, player, okay, right? it's going to be Mecha Godzilla because that's either his eye or his brain, one yeah. of the two. And then you know, again, spoilers for it to be um, thrown in there that it's tied together with the Hydra from the last. Yeah, that didn't make sense. The Hydra. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know. It was like they just swung for the fences with the goofy uh, technology and, and all the far-fetched stuff. You know, the, the hollow earth was, was neat. It looked great. Um, the whole reversal of gravity thing, you know, having two plant, you know, two uh, grounds, one on the ceiling and one on the actual ground. Did you say you didn't like that or you did? I thought it was, I, I mean, it didn't, where was the sunlight coming from? The whole place is lit like it's daytime, but th there's Over. a, there's ground above you and there's ground below you and there's no sky. All right. All <laughs> right. <laughs> the concept you got, it was great. Right. No, yeah, that's what I meant. The, the actual, the idea is very neat, but just how they pulled it off, it just seemed it seemed like it was, it seemed like it was three or, you know, two or three movies in one movie. It was just like, there was so much going on with everything, but yeah, I mean, I, I really kind of gave up when Kong is inside the earth <laughs> and he screams and Godzilla's on the surface of the earth and he hears him scream. That's not, then, no, 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 you know, no, no, no. He, he, Godzilla sensed the energy coming from the from the ta the temple thing, yeah. And so he happens to be right above it, exactly above where he's at, and then blasts a hole between his legs into the ground, and all the way to Middle Earth, all the way to Middle Earth, uh, right in the same room, so that they can both look up and look at each other, <laughs> and look down and look at each other. I was like, okay. And and, and once I kind of gave up, I mean, it was, I mean, it was. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought there would be because the other movies had a little more reality to them. Yeah, you know, they they were you know the, either the way they looked or you know the technology that was there, the military movements. You know, everything kind of had some some basis in reality. This was just like the swinging for the fences. You know, they didn't they didn't really care if you could figure it out or if it made sense. Which you know those movies are historically that way, and yeah. this is probably the first one that is that way the other ones have maybe been too real well the but... other ones let me interrupt you for a second the other ones had more human plot elements and more story wrapped around the humans i think this one wisely cut a lot of that shit um there were like i took some notes uh some characters that i liked and uh the two that i there are three characters i liked 
out of all of them. I like Bernie Hayes, who's the podcast guy, and that was Brian Tyree Henry. That's Paperboy from Atlanta. Yeah, from Atlanta. Yeah, love him. Yeah. He's such a great actor. Yeah, he was fantastic in this. I mean, he, to me, was the best character in the entire thing. Nathan Lind, who is Alexander Skarsgård, I thought that character was cool. It's usually, it's it's not like him to play a role like that, so I, I thought he did an, an okay job. And I liked Gia, who was Kaylee Hoddle. She was the deaf girl who was able to communicate with Kong. I thought that was an interesting thing. Um, the two that I found most annoying, and you guys can jump jump off of this too, uh, Josh the, the fat kid that hung out with uh, Millie Bobby Brown, that actor's name is Julian Denison, Denison, Madison, Millie Bobby Brown's character, didn't care about her and her dad. Who did you like that sex scene with Millie Bobby Brown and Gadzuki? I did. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I wasn't, I was shocked by that, but it was, yeah, it was pretty hot. Godzuki, hot. Stranger things. And then my least favorite character was the most uh, uh, stereotypical character. I thought in the whole film was Maya, who's Isa Gonzalez, Thought that character, you know, she's the I'm in charge here. This is my dad's company. And he just knew that they were going to kill her. And when she dies, uh, and we're, we are hopefully going to have spoiler alert on the video. <laughs> I'll put it in the notes, too. But uh, when she dies, <laughs> yes, thank God this character is not on the show in this movie anymore. I like her, though, as a person. Oh, yeah. I don't. But the character was terrible. I mean, that's she that's was, all writing. She was Santanica on the uh, From Dust Till Dawn series that they had a couple of years back. I'm going to watch that. If you say it's really, really good. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, I like that that Julian Dennison. He's he's a cool actor. He was in the, the Hunt for the Wilder People. That He's a Kiwi. Was he the, the main bad guy? Uh, no, the, the kid. The oh, Josh. Yeah, Bobby right. Brown. That yeah. character was so annoying. He, he, yeah, was, he was also in Deadpool. He was yeah, the, the second uh, one, right? Yeah, yeah, the second one. He was the kid they were going after. I mean, great, great actor, but yeah, he, it seemed like I don't know, a lot of a lot of roles in this seemed like they were filled as like favors. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, like, like th they just cherry picked these people, and it's funny because it's almost like the list they chose from was probably when they started making it a few years ago. Yeah, and it was like the hot people of you know then, and then by the time it comes out, I mean it's been what 2018 was right. probably. I mean, it's, it's been, they've been working on this movie for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I had fun watching it though. I just made some popcorn, sh shut my brain off and I just enjoyed it. I wasn't thinking too deeply about it. Yeah. I, I tried not to go into it with an overly critical view and, uh, and, and Dustin though, just watched all the old ones. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's fresh in your mind as well. So you're thinking, God, those were so much better to me. Yeah. yeah well, that was, yeah, they were on my head. And so I was kind of in this, in that mindset of where's it going to go next? But I, I thought it, you know, it was supposedly five years after the, the last movie. So, yeah. or the last attack. So, and, you know, and, and that destroyed, if you remember everything like Washington, DC was completely yeah. you know gone in New York and Boston. So it's, it, it just seemed like everything was a little too up and up and running very smoothly for the half of the world to be destroyed five years previous turns oh, out all it takes is a bunch of guys in buffalo hats invading the capital <laughs> to destroy this. not a giant lizard i thought the fight scenes you said they they, they did kind of they were kind of lumbering but i liked them i thought they were cool i like that you could see their up close facial expressions like god's yeah. and he's laughing when he beats the shit out of kong and uh then I got that, like, you remember that feeling you had in the when you were watching wrestling in the 80s and there was a heel who would turn to a face in the ring, you know, he, and he'd help the, the guy that he'd been fighting for months or, you know, in that whole, you know what I mean? He yeah. that tingly thing, oh, Jimmy Snook is good now. Sure. Oh, you know, and that's when, when, God, when King Kong started fighting to help Godzilla. I thought that was cool. The other thing I like and that, I, that I took away, it's just a small thing, but King Kong has an ax and that ax is a scale or one of the back pieces from one of the spinal fins, actually from uh, a Godzilla like creature. And apparently the mythos is that these two characters, these two creatures are of a races of Titans that live in the middle of the earth and end up fighting each other. And they've had a thousand years of history with each other. So, but now they're friends, they're <laughs> friends because they're friends. That's why. And, and then, yeah. And to your point, Dustin, it was kind of stupid that 
they uh, they go to the middle of the earth and set up an observatory. How the fuck is there air there? And yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, but I don't care. It was still fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'll you know I'll probably give it another watch here in a, in a week or so, and and just uh, you know try to try to look at it differently. But yeah, I think that was my problem. I I'd kind of set myself up for failure by it watching all the others wasn't overly long and you're know, like, you know, less humans, less humans. That's mm-hmm. the thing. All right. So uh, if you uh, haven't seen it yet, sorry, we told you there were spoilers, but if you have, let us know what you think on Facebook and Twitter, because uh, we, we would like to respond. We do have our new t-shirt, our, uh, our uh, blockumentary t-shirt, which kind of looks like the blockbuster logo. You can get that uh, on our, uh, on our uh, store frontier page. And the link will be, in the show notes, whether you're watching this uh, or listening to it. Speaking of watching it on YouTube, Dustin runs our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash radio labyrinth podcast. If you're a listener and uh, you don't watch it, but you have YouTube, please go to YouTube and just hit subscribe. That's all you got to do. You don't have to watch it if you don't want it. I mean, I wouldn't want to look at me either, but um, it does help us. And we want to get as many as subscribers as we can. Our goal is to get a thousand. And that would be really, really awesome. Uh, plus we, and they're not in here. I left them out in the living room, but I got a roll of stickers today. So I'll make sure you guys all get some stickers. Yeah. I want some stickers. And yeah, they look really, they came out looking really cool. They had a special on sticker mule. So I got them. So I want to say anybody who signs up for Patreon, uh, in the next new Patreon members who sign up in the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll get a free sticker, a whole bunch of them, actually, because I got a bunch. and We'll just drop them in the mail to you with a thank you card. If you come in as a producer, though, which is twenty five dollars, you get a, a T-shirt of your choice from our T-shirt store that we'll have sent to you. Um, please follow us on Twitter at radio underscore labyrinth or join the radio shack, which is uh, where all the cool people hang out and listen to the podcast on Facebook. So it's Facebook. Is there a direct link to that? Dustin? Uh, You can go to the, our radio shack or I'm sorry, the radio labyrinth page on Facebook Mm -hmm. and right underneath it says groups. You can hit groups and we're right there. There's a link for it right there. Awesome. I'm starting to get back into Facebook, by the way, interacting with people and posting stuff because I found, and I don't know about you guys, but I found that there's about 97% less politics and arguing going on, at least on my feed. I don't know about yours, but uh, then if you open up Twitter and that's 100% people fighting about stupid stuff. But Twitter, you can interact with people. You, I, I'm, I'm not Twitter, but Facebook. I'm, I'm finding it to be a little more fun. Am, am I wrong? No, when I, when I made the, the original uh, Radio Shack, <clears throat> I specifically put in there no politics n- just, just because – that for that reason you know every i liked everything you know there's no reason to there's a lot more fun that we have on the podcast and at the time that you know you guys would talk about you know without bringing the politics into it so yeah. i always kind of prefaced it with that so and it's kind of held so you know i don't i don't kick people for you know talking about it or anything so people just on their own you know know it's a place they can just you know say what they want to say and it's a private group. So, you, you know, your family don't see it. If you post yeah. stuff, that's a little, you know, a little blue, which we get sometimes. So uh, that's why, you know, I wanted to, it to be a, you know, a safe place for everybody to just to joke around, just like you joke around on the show. Yeah. And if we say something ignorant and dumb, <laughs> like me, somebody can yeah. go in the shack and let you know that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. What did you say that was intimate and dumb? Well, I, you know, I, I don't know the comic book history as i oh. should you know rob kearns corrected me today on Uh-oh. i po- totally appreciate love rob kearns he's the great grill master everyone knows this um and he just basically said that the whole bit with the um one black super soldier that that was in the comic book years ago that there was like 300 of them and there was only like one left john and- roberts right Right. So it was a part of the comic. It wasn't just a part of just the wokeness thing, you know. Well, he became. I just assume because they put it right together with the thing that happened afterwards in the street, that it was like one big, long woke stress. <laughs> Didn't he become um, Captain America in yes. the in the like 90s? Yeah, there were, yeah, there was a time. I thought it was a throwback. He was actually they wanted him to be Captain America once Captain America was missing for a long time. But I mean, this is before the movies. I'm talking about in the 90s era comic books. I have a there was somebody 
and I can't remember if it was then or it might have been the 2000s, but I know it was long before the movies came out. And I, I can't remember. But anyway, but, you know, it was cool. You know, same thing as it was cool when when Rhodey took over for um, Iron Man in 1985. So anyway, uh, I think I went I took your point in the wrong direction, Steph. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Yeah, my my point was just that you can if you can go in the radio shack and yes. tell us about ourselves and we see it. Oh, yeah. Isaiah Bradley was the character that was the black Captain America. And that was in 2003. Yeah. See, and that was cool. It was like, holy shit. And, and, you know, it was doubly cool. Uh, one, for that angle. But two, a new character is is playing Captain America. They did have a storyline in the 80s where Captain America retired. Somebody took over and he ended up being an asshole. I think, I mean, for, I think over a while it might have been the Punisher. I don't know. That might have been a what if. But that was a cool what if. What if the Punisher had become Captain America? <laughs> Running around with a red, white, and blue gun killing people. <laughs> And uh, and then Steve Rogers came back as like Captain, you know, Freedom or something, and he had a different outfit and a different shield. It all blends together for me because I don't have any of those comic books anymore. But it'd be nice if I did. You know, I wish I still had my Todd McFarlane ones. Uh, before. Before we get to some news stories and stuff that's going on, um, a couple people died and, and, you know, we'll, we'll mention them. But the, the one I want to bring up first is G. Gordon Liddy. If you guys remember who that is, do you did you remember who he was, uh, Dustin? I only remembered him from you guys talking about you guys had, um, before you guys had mentioned it on here. Oh, shit. You didn't, you didn't remember his talk show? Once I saw the pictures, but it, pre Jerry, pre Jerry Springer. Yeah, and it was it was along those lines. It was the precursor for that kind of stuff. But it seemed very familiar. But it was it was something either it was just off my radar or maybe a few years yeah, ahead of me. Too young, maybe. Man, he was very bald. He yes, he was always bald. <laughs> they had that big thick mustache, mm-hmm. like a push broom. Yeah, yeah. You you look like uh, a little guy at the end of uh, cartoons who used to sweep and had the big mustache. You know what I'm talking. He was the one that was on Miami Vice, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He, had a, he had a radio show too where he would uh, talk to people and it was a it was a political talk show he was a competitor to rush limbaugh and he was on a lot of stations that uh in the in the 90s infinity broadcasting owned cbs radio howard stern was always the anchor in the morning and it was followed by g gordon liddy and so howard would have him on and talk to him and promote him because he wanted to beat rush limbaugh and uh that was that was kind of funny to, to listen to his show he would talk to people about this and that and he could talk about anything there's a there's a couple of great pop culture references when it comes to g gordon Liddy that aren't miami vice or watergate um or that kind of shit but he there's 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 a, a prank phone call that you can find on youtube uh if you type in crackhead bob g gordon Liddy, and he, in, in you know these these conservative radio hosts always do shows from israel and they they'll you know you either come with us and take the boat you know like jeff would go on the cruise with uh, the practical jokers this is a bunch of right-wing talk radio hosts going to israel so you know and touring the holy sites which is cool but uh they always do these shows and so they had howard howard uh prank call people use crackhead bob clips called into the show, got through and said that uh, he is, uh, his name is Bob and he was captured by Al Qaeda. And that's why he talks that way. <laughs> so it's pretty, <laughs> so you can find it. And then what was the other thing I was going to say? I forgot. I forgot. See this. My brain is just dead. It must've been a long week. I got my COVID shot. I'm blaming it on the COVID shot. How, how's your arm? My arm hurt like hell the day after, but it, it wasn't as bad as a, um, it wasn't as bad as a, uh, Tetanus shot. Tetanus shot. No, tetanus shots hurt longer. But I, I got the Moderna, you know, but, you know, I, it's there's tons of pollen in the air and I have terrible allergies. So any sniffle or trickle in my throat or a cough, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to get it now. No. Why would you get it now? I, I, well, I only had half the vaccine, so I'll get half a COVID. I'll just get the cove, not the <laughs> id. Or would it be ca? I don't know. I can't figure it out. I'm trying to think of that. What was that other fucking g gordon lady thing okay there's lots of cultural things i was talking about but anyway we've already told the story go ahead you you yelled that he was a nazi adam 
Yeah, I think, but we dust like Dustin said, we've already told this story. Yeah. But if you're new and you, you don't know this story, in 1988, Jeff and I were both big fans of Abby Hoffman, who was a yippie and he was involved in uh, the Chicago protests of 1968, the Democratic National Convention. Uh, and we, we thought he was cool, right? And I still think he was cool, but he was, he was a funny, you know, street performer type of whatever. But he and G. Gordon Liddy were doing a thing where they debated the CIA's role in Central America. I know. So Jeff and I are Jeff's 18. I'm 17 and pretty highfalutin shit. But we wanted to go meet Abby Hoffman. And uh, so we drove up to Ithaca College, which is in Ithaca, New York. And we paid whatever it was. First, I made Jeff take me to Sam Goody so I could buy Now and Zen. They just released Robert Plant album. I think he probably bought it for me, too. Hey, can you loan me the money that I'm never going to pay you back? Anyway. I have, I'm in the mood. Yes, I'm in the mood. No, now and Zen was tall, cool one. It was the oh, one okay. where he finally re-acknowledged or he acknowledged that he was in Led Zeppelin. Yeah. And, and Jimmy Page played guitar on a couple songs. It was a big deal, you know, back then if you were a Zeppelin. Yeah, they're getting back together. They didn't. Um, well, they did Page and Plant. So the we Honey Drippers' greatest hits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Jeff drove up and we took, you know, the, the Aero star van and the, the glorious catalytic converter. If you remember that wonderful smell, do you remember that Jeff, you'd drive that for a little bit and then the egg smell would hit you. Yep. Yep. Um, but it was a cool van. And, uh, so we drove up there and we watched them do the debate and then they had a Q and a line. So I was like, I'm going to ask a question. I wore some stupid tie dye shirt. Yeah, I'm all hippie and, you know, his 60s. And so I get in the line and, and I wait and wait and wait and wait. And I think I'm the last question. Everybody asks legitimate questions of both of them. I get up there and I go, I go, you, sir, are a Nazi. And I gave him the, the Zieg Heil, the swastika, you know, not the swastika, but I gave him the Zieg Heil, the arm salute. And I'm like, such a yeah. rebel. And I'm yelling about Bill Moyer said in his documentary that the CIA is involved and blah, blah, blah. And the moderator went, do you have a question? I said, no. <laughs> and the crowd booed me. Uh, you fast forward in 1997, I'm at a radio convention. The National Association of Broadcasters did these conventions and my company went there. And uh, so our buddy Stu that we've talked to before on here, he and I worked for the same company. We went, I set up the whole booth. I rented the, you know, the TV monitors, the real cool, you know, you stack nine on nine of them and you program them. And I'm in New Orleans and it's great and, and we're having fun. And then uh, one day we're walking around the convention center and G Gordon Liddy has a booth because he was promoting his radio show. So I went up to him and said, hi, um, I really uh, enjoyed listening to your radio show because even though I wasn't right wing, I still listened to talk radio and he did a good show. He's a good broadcaster, um, you know, much like Rush was, even if he couldn't agree with him he still did a, a good show but the uh i went up to him and i said you know i saw you debate abby hoffman in 1988 oh yeah i said yeah he goes what did you think i said well at the end of it i i, I called you a nazi and i just wanted to apologize <laughs> I said, you, know, you an apology accepted young man Thank you. <laughs> and then another that night uh, we, of course, when you're in New Orleans and it's nighttime, what do you do? You drink and you're young. So we went out and got smashed. I was totally shit faced. I mean, we went to all these bars. At one point I threw up. We were at the place that sells the hurricanes. I threw up and came back, finished my hurricane and kept drinking. Um, Didn't you see James Carville? That's what I was going to say. We're, <laughs> Stu and I are crossing the street and this is two in the morning. James Carville and, and his wife are, you know, she's the, the conservative when, you know, they were the it couple and they're crossing the street. And I went, well, look at me. James Carver. And he goes, hello. <laughs> he just kept walking. You know, this scrunched up little evil face. Hello. Yeah. He's so hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks like an, a, an insect. Then he looks like Zorak. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. He looks like the Six Flags guy. Yes, he does. <laughs> He's the one that said, you could drag a dollar bill through a trailer park and find someone with more credibility than <laughs> You Paula would. Jones. That's what you get when you drag a dollar bill through a park, through a to a trailer park. <laughs> so alligator's got all them teeth and no toothbrush. Yes, yeah, right. He got all them. Yes, yeah, but yeah, and his pinched up face. Yeah. <laughs> God, you know who he actually looks like? He looks. He looks exactly like Ultron looked in the comic books when they first came out with him. You can find that with that jagged smile. 
So that's that's the Gigo and Liddy story. I'm sorry that we've told it twice, but uh, I wish I could yeah, rest, hmm? rest in peace, Gigo and Liddy. Yeah, I mean, you know, oh, he was involved in Watergate and blah 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 blah. I think it's it's pretty cool. Alan Moore, uh, the guy that created uh, the Watchmen, yeah, wrote the, wrote the comic. He actually created the the character of the comedian that got thrown through the window. Oh yeah, that the comedian's character was based on G. Gordon Liddy. I did not know that. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Actually, except for, you know, he wasn't bald, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But Liddy orchestrated the entire break in. And uh, so that's interesting. If you read up on him, he had an interesting life. He was in the military. There's always that story. He would put a candle under his hand and held it there. And he goes, this is what you have to do. You ignore the pain. I don't know how true that is, but it's in his book. Anyway, so yeah, rest in peace, G. Gordon Liddy. We might as well do the other person who died. Uh, Jeff, who is it? Larry McMurtry. And he is an author, right? Yeah, he wrote like uh, Lonesome Dove, Terms of Endearment, uh, The Last Picture Show. Wow, that's a pretty pro- a prolific um, writing career, huh? Let's see. It looks like um, American Gods uh, is going to be canceled on stars after the, this season. Uh, not, not with, it could, still could bring it back for a movie to close. Now, that hadn't been taken off the table yet, but it looks like there's going to be no more seasons. And I, I stopped after the first one. Do you got? Did you guys still watch it? I didn't. Uh, watch I, it. I watched all the way through season three, and season see, season three was a lot better than the, the first two seasons. Really? Yeah, because I think they they took like a hiatus between season two and season three, and they came back and just had a lot of creative energy and and uh, Shadow Moon, that guy that Steph hates. <laughs> I forget what his name is, but he he had hair in season three. So, do you still hate Walter Goggins stuff? Never hated him. Why do you say? I used to call him things like you that. Used to call him ass eyes. It doesn't mean I hate him. Oh, There's okay. a lot of people that I think are crazy looking, and I think they're wonderful. Oh, okay. that was just so, descriptive. All right, ass yes. eyes is a term of endearment. <laughs> he has a very Kentuckyish, close-eyed look. Okay, just check. Got, got narrow eyes. I wonder what he'd look actor. like with his original teeth and no hair plugs. <laughs> I, I, like I, Carvel. <laughs> Neil, Neil Gaiman says he wants to do something to wrap it up, like a movie or a, a limited, you know, two or three episode thing. But so far, no takers on a network or anything. The first season to me was it was up and down. Yeah. I kept watching it. It was visually captivating i guess that's probably what kept me into it but most of the point is because it had uh cocksucker swearing in it in mcshane yeah he was great in season three he was good in that nbc show that came out that went away after a while the one about the king's kingdom you know the the two kingdoms that were fighting each other with modern Mm -hmm. weaponry but he was the king i don't know was was it called kings since uh shit shit's creek is done uh you can actually they put the the motel up on the market so you could purchase and live in the Shit's Creek Motel. I would love that. You got one point six million. It's yours. That's it. Gosh. I'm gonna go get a loan. Mm-mm-mm. Does it say Rosebud up there? Is it the Rosebud Motel? I'm sure. I'm sure, they've probably taken down all of the descriptors. Mm. They'll do. They usually most of the set people do that for everything before they leave. I love roadside motels. I'm a big roadside motel person. There's still a bunch of them. Like, like old out, school ones? Yeah, yeah like on the highway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no pool, just a strip. I don't want to sleep in them. I just like looking at them, <laughs> like for their, for their kitschy artistic value. But no, I do not want to sleep in them. I just, I, just like to, I just like them to be there. Just know that there's still some Yeah, just to know they're still there. Like there's a place in Michigan, the guy is selling it right now. It's called the Terrace Motel, and it's in the UP, in the, in the UP. And it's a place where... In the wintertime, you can only get around up there by snowmobile, practically. But if you do get up there, it's unbelievably stunning. But it's just like this roadside, low-budget motel, and it's wildly popular. People love to go there. Bikers go there in the summertime or whatever. But it has, like, the neon terrace motel flashing. I think that's what Uh it is. I just love all the neon signs. When we went to Brevard in North Carolina... Caitlin found a room at a hotel that was built in, I think the thirties or forties. And it's the same. I mean, the room is huge, but 
it has that neon sign, just like you're talking about with the flashing and the animation. And it's really cool. If you've never been to Brevard, they have white squirrels there and good oh. parts. Yeah. It uh, looks like uh, the show we were talking about um, last week, Pooch Perfect um, with Rebel Wilson is getting some slack on Twitter. People claiming that all of the stuff being done to the dogs is abuse. Hmm. And I, I guess it kind of falls on those people that think dying your dogs, you know, hair match to, to match your purse. Yeah. I could see, I could see how that would be, uh, constricted. Does it poison the animal. No, it, it washes out. I mean, <clears throat> she's a uh, rebel came up to, you know, come back at them and, and let them know, you know, all this stuff is, you know, it's washable at the dogs are, you know, by far the thing that, you know, is kept, you know, in, in the best, um, conditions during these things. And she also brought up, which I wasn't aware. She, she's, um, from a four, fourth generation dog shower. So she's, she's had shih tzus and she was a junior, uh, shower when she was a kid, she's got like trophies and stuff. So she's been doing it her whole life. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't think I thought, I guess that they would assume they would have some pushback. I mean, anytime that you treat an animal, you know, like an object and not an animal, you're going to have some people that take offense to that. Yeah, you tree horn motherfuckers. <laughs> what do you think, Steph? Um, I think that as long as they use, you know, vegetable food coloring, things like that, if they were going to do dyes, as long as it's not harmful, no chemicals or whatever, I don't think it matters. I mean, a lot of the dogs, they really seem to like this crap. I, I've known several people who have had little foo foo dogs, or the dog. They really seem to get into it because they love all the attention that they get from it. Um, I personally, I hate dog shows really, just because of you know when you're in rescue, you see all these dogs getting dumped after they've been bred and bred and bred. So I personally don't give a rat's ass about it. I think a mutt's the best dog that ever was. Yeah, that's it's true. The strongest traits of all of the breeds. They love you the most. And yeah, I mean, anyway, but I mean, I, I think all dogs, they're all, they're all beautiful. We should just celebrate them and hold them up high. I want to hug the next dog. <laughs> well, you know, at least they're not, you know, taking the dogs and putting human blood into them and, you know, drawing pentagrams on them and trying to sell them for like 1100 bucks a piece for a pair. They sold out. They sold out in like, what, a minute? Yeah, I mean, Lil Nas. What are you talking about, trying to sell Lil Nas X? Sneakers. Yeah, he's trying, you know, it's funny the jesus shoes which came out what last year or year before you know you didn't see anybody you know bucking on those nike wasn't jumping down somebody's throat saying hey you guys are doing this but you know you throw this up especially i guess by him since he had you know had all this you know huge following before this by a fan base that was not his own uh and then to come up with um this idea and i and I'm, i almost think that's the reason he's doing it I think he's doing it just as a, let me see if I can get away with this. Yeah, of course he is. Do you think he's really a Satanist? No. That, that's the part. Yeah. You would think that all these people that are coming out against it, are, you know, that's what, you know, all I see is people throwing Bible verses and, and trying, you know, which it has one on the shoe and there is a meaning behind what he's doing. It, I think it's, I think a lot of people are, I think he's just playing a nation, which Anybody is ever look hilarious. At Look at a cover of a Motley Crue album from the mid eighties would tell you either the pentagram or Judas priest or any of those bands or mm -hmm. black Sabbath, any of those bands, they all did the same thing and they had the same scrutiny. There just wasn't social media. Yeah, but it seemed like Nike was having a fit about them putting human blood into it. I'm like, well, you don't care about the Chinese children that put their blood into the shoes when you make them over there. Or the guy that jumps out of the building when he gets the uh, grommets in incorrectly. <laughs> right. He doesn't get his dollar that he made that day. <laughs> but you're right. It's something that comes around, you know, what, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, Kiss did the same thing. Yeah. They put blood in their albums when they make, when they pressed them. Kings and Satan service. I mean, that's what my grandfather didn't even know who the hell they were. He, right. uh, Tim, that's uh, Kings and Satan service. What I thought it was thinking? Knights and Satan service. Uh, I guess in the Northeast, <laughs> it was Kings, like Hoagie <laughs> and it's Knights and Hoagie and all that shit. But it's yeah. stupid. I mean, all it is is marketing. You know what? No one's paying attention to Lil Nas X these days, so I'm going to make this ridiculous video. That's all it is. It's all it ever has been. And now that you have social media, 
everything is amplified and then people fight about it. And then, uh, yeah, it's just the same lather, rinse and repeat with every single fucking issue, every single fucking issue, everything. And it's, this is marketing. It's just marketing. And, and you know what, if you, I listen to the song and it's actually not a bad song, the guy can, if he's writing it, whoever puts those songs together, they do a great job. And uh, he could have been there dancing like Rick Astley, looking like a dumb fool against the wall in, in, you know, bugle boy jeans. Or he could put himself getting fucked in the ass by Satan. It's the same thing. It's just marketing. Aren't we all getting fucked in the ass by Satan? Getting fucked in the ass by somebody. If you're wearing bugle boy jeans, you definitely are. Yeah, well, hey, now. <laughs> Isn't that a nice loose fit? I love bugle boys. I didn't like the acid wash ones, but I like the, you know, I had those ones that you could flare out and I'd peg them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, uh, tight, and I put little dimes in my black uh, penny loafers. Oh, give me a bugle. Did you go to Chess King <laughs> to get your bugle boys. No, but I did buy. Uh, I bought zipper pants at Chess King once that didn't fit me, and I wore them to school once. Parachute pants, you mean? Yeah, but they had zippers all over them, and then I had a rubber belt that looked like a clown came on it. Well, uh, along with, I guess, pulling out. Uh, you know, get, people are getting upset with the uh, the shoes that are coming out. They're also pulling some SpongeBob episodes off Paramount Plus. How could that be bad? Well, what's funny is the the stuff they pulled. Um, they pulled one episode, which was a quarantine episode. So you know, they thought maybe it might be touchy with the you know everything going on in the last year. Which I, okay, I can see that. The but the other one that they pulled was. Uh, what was it? Well, when you say it was touchy, why? What was the subject yeah. matter of it? It was just that there was a quarantine in the restaurant where they found that there was a virus in the restaurant. And so they locked everyone that was in the restaurant together. And then it was them just, you know, basically, um, you know, setting through quarantine for days and days and days and going crazy. And and they, I guess they thought it was it was bad form with everything that was going on. Um, I think that's I think that's good for kids. Wouldn't kids like like that? Be like, yeah, this is exactly the bullshit we've been dealing with. I think we we as kids would have appreciated the satire. Kids today doesn't know what satire is. Yeah, they don't understand it. So, so literal. Yeah, so they would take it literally. Yeah, but the other one was I, I thought a little strange. It was about mid. It was called Midlife crust, um, Crustacean. The episode was about SpongeBob and Patrick have to sneak and Squidward sneak into a, a lady's house to steal her underwear. Oh, that was the I'm plot of, of the episode. So they, they, they determined that some story elements were not kid appropriate. Okay, so, maybe uh, a Nickelodeon. Not you maybe. never watch that fucking show. Stoners watch that show. That's true. It really has. It's really kind of jumped the shark for kids. I think I don't think they care about it anymore. Now they, they put out the, uh, was that last movie and it didn't really do anything. Like that Tom and Jerry movie. What kid was clamoring? Can we go get out of the pandemic to go see this movie about a cat and a mouse? I have no idea who they are. Unless, you know, the dad is a collector of shit like that. I mean, we know Tom and Jerry because we grew up with Tom and Jerry. How would these kids know Tom and Jerry? I don't think they had to know. I think they just saw it as another kid's movie, but. They fight and fight. (laughs) I'm going to say what probably one of the most popular for like the eight to 11 year olds. I love that amazing world of gumball, which I like that show. It's a funny show. And then there's this other thing, five nights at Freddy's. I don't know what the hell any of that is, but that's super popular, right? Yeah. yeah. And then I and mean, it's disgusting. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and yeah, it's pretty much everything from that um, Nicholas Cage movie. Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much what they based it. That's why those movies like that have gotten made over the last couple of years because they're trying to emulate that Five Nights at Freddy's game, which is, you know, it's one of those horror games where you're trapped in a building, a dark building, and those things are coming after you. Okay. All and right. Kids are all into that. Any more stories? Um. Yeah. The and the guy that that did um. This King Kong versus Godzilla. He's been handed his next uh, mission, and it looks like it's going to be to make a Thundercats Ooh, live action movie. That's cool. So we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm not really you doing it right now. But give me a year. No, I love the Thundercats. And that's yeah, probably the problem because <laughs> I wasn't impressed with with Godzilla versus King Kong. So I'm assuming but, they'll just get all old celebrities because they all look like Thundercats now. <laughs> Here's Madonna. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. 
She looked horrible. She released some uh, picture that that. with her. No, kind of, no, no, honey. Mm-mm. You're talented as fuck. Or you as long as I don't get the computer graphics company that made those CGI cats for the cats movie, I think we'll be all right. I've never seen that. Ones with the cat, little cat CGI buttholes. Yeah. Get out of here. All right. Uh, so um, I guess, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so just a couple of headlines that I saw in the news that Jeff, when you guys put in there, uh, Bob Odenkirk says we shouldn't assume Kim is dead and breaking bad. I think we all reached that conclusion. Um, and uh, this is interesting to me. Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson are resurrecting Saw. Um, that sounds cool to me. I love that franchise. I saw the trailer what'd you, yesterday. What'd yeah. you think of it? Spiral. Yeah, Spiral's the name of it. Um, I don't know. I thought it was... Uh, is it Jigsaw okay. or someone else? It, it looks like they're taking an amalgam. I mean, it's not almost like a reboot. It's almost like a continuation because right. they mention it's Jigsaw and, and they mention that, you know, uh, you know, things that happened in the past. And then they show a few scenes, you know, one where Chris Rock has a, uh, a saw in his hand and he's handcuffed to a wall. Mm. So... I, I, you know, hopefully it's those movies got really weird after the second or third one uh, <laughs> as me. sequels do. But, but this one, I mean, I, this one seems like, and from what I read too, is they're taking more of a Fincher approach to it, more of a seven approach to it. Mm-hmm. Cause Jigsaw is uh, targeting cops. So he's like basically serial killing cops. Oh yeah. And, yeah, and this uh, one happens in a police station. Is the Who wants to play a motherfucking game? <laughs> Would you like to play a game? When does it come out? Or syrup? Yeah. <laughs> I prefer syrup. That's that album is still one of the best comedy albums of the twentieth century, twenty first century. Such a good album. When did it come out? Not, maybe ninety nine. I don't know. But that that comedy album that that Chris Rock did with does it bring the pain? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, OJ, I understand. Michael Scott got in trouble for reciting it at the office. Oh, wait, what was he reciting? It's <laughs> the Chris Rock album. Oh my God! Yeah. Speaking of though, did you see this week where uh, the the Asian ladies that played in the Benny Hanna episode they came out and said that they were felt like they were treated like the Benny Hanna episode of what of the Office? You never watched the Office, so you don't because because they said they looked like they. The two ladies looked yeah like and that they, they, they felt like they weren't like people they weren't treated like people they weren't per- portrayed as people and the whole point was that michael was an absolute imbecile right and he did he was completely politically incorrect and you're cringing through the whole episode on purpose it was written that way right. and it's like 15 years later 16 years later i'm just like i fucking hate our time i hate the time that we live in peacock remove it yet yeah, I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure because it caused spa shootings. Yeah, it's too much. Too I'm much information. It's too much information for for people. For yeah, they should have like a. Uh, I always felt they should have like a age limit on the internet. Like you can eight, you know, sixteen you can drive, eighteen you can vote, eighteen you can get on, you know, twenty you can get on the internet, <laughs> and then when you're sixty, you're off. Because yeah, you're done. Yeah. Donald Trump is going to be president in August. You'll see. <laughs> this week, I finally learned how to do um, uh, uh, that. Mike Lindell, the guy that started the My Pillow Company, what a oh, nut what? he is! Huh? What you're going to do his voice? No, because my throat he, hurts. He just he just started smoking crack. That's what he means. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why my throat hurts. Boy, that stuff is hard. Speech and speaking of crack. Uh, season three, three episodes in now of Snowfall. The oh, best show that I caught know. up. Oh hell yeah! Three's the best. Three's so good. I can tell because uh, Franklin's got his. He's got his nuts, man. He ain't gonna let anybody fuck with him. I love all the characters. It's a great show, and I'm sorry I sat on it, but at least I get to experience it now. Yeah, no. How much do you love Uncle Jerome, though? That's all I want to say. Love Uncle Jerome. <laughs> I love Uncle Jerome. He's great. Do you? You see what I'm saying? Is they should have got him to play Spawn. Why not get him to play Spawn? Dude, hell yeah. He would have been awesome. Anyway. I love all the characters, and uh, I'm really liking Fatback. I can't wait to see what happens to him in season five. <laughs> he's the best, man. He won't just, he's so, featured so hard in season four. 
Yeah. The star, cool. man. Awesome. So he's going <laughs> to return in season. Four. I can't wait. I can't wait to get caught up. And thank you for the news, Dustin. Holy crap. Yes. So we actually have something going on this coming Sunday. Now, I know it's Easter Sunday, but, you know, maybe some of you guys are heathens and you don't go to church like me. And if you don't, maybe you might want to go check out some of our adoptable pups. They're going to be at the Brooklyn Bagel Bakery this Sunday from 930 to 1. And that's on Hainsbridge, Hainsbridge Road in Johns Creek. Mm-hmm. So you come have some bagels, meet some of our dogs, talk to our volunteers, you know, just whatever. And you could also buy some raffle tickets if you wanted to. I know Tim put it in the show notes, but if you'd like to buy some raffle tickets for some very cool prizes, go to barkvillerafle.charityraffles.org. It really helps all of our, you know, endeavors. We need money for all of the pups that we pulled this week. Um, we got a dog right now who was mangled in a car accident and the owner couldn't afford to do anything for him so he was just going to put him down mm. and we were like no we'll take him we'll pay the thousands we'll get him fixed up it's a young dog so yes. this is the kind of stuff that we do and uh so you can donate to us at barkfielddogrescue.org thank you and thank barkfield.rescue.org jeff <laughs> oh yeah keep it canine <laughs> thank you all right, guys, this has been fun. I'm glad we had a good discussion about King Kong and versus or Kong. I always want to say King Kong first because I like him better than Godzilla. I always did. Uh, Godzilla versus King Kong, which we have uh, two thumbs up, one thumbs down, and one thumb up her ass while she's waiting to watch the movie. I don't know if I'm going to watch it now. Yeah, you don't need. I think, it. Watch, and I think I'm just going to watch Unhinged now that it's on Prime. Unhinged? Tell me what is Russell it? Crowe, where he's. You know, oh. he's, in, he's lost it. He's just he, taken it out. He just oh, he, falling down part two with Russell Crowe. Yes, yes yeah. but oh. more violent. More violent. I ordered breakfast. Can I get some breakfast? Just go make me some fucking breakfast. <laughs> to work on that one. Uh, and if you're going to hear the Mike Lindell, when I started my pillow, I started smoking crack and I filled the pillow up with crack. And when you lay down in a bed of crack, you get a good night's sleep while staying awake at the same time. Also, Donald Trump will be president. I have all the evidence in this can full of pencil shavings. See? <laughs> All those pencil shavings in this Cafe Bustello can lead me to determine that Donald Trump will assume office in August. So stay tuned. There was nothing but election fraud. And to all you algorithms out there, this is parody and we don't really believe it. So shut the fuck up and leave us alone. And if you want some cracker or my pillow, just go to crackinmypillow.org. <laughs> it's simple, close enough close enough all right guys thanks for listening and uh enjoy your weekends and or your weekends enjoy your weekend enjoy every weekend so that would be weekend happy easter y'all yeah happy, happy easter. easter hey peter cottontail you come down my trail you're gonna be leaving with a foot up your ass <laughs> and if you're out there and you bought your kid a rabbit or a duck uh for uh easter you they don't care about the duck or the rabbit about a day later. So you just, you know, condemn that poor animal to a life of misery. You're an asshole. No, uh, send it to me. We'll cook them up. Anyway, uh, until next week, please remember to keep it. Keep it, 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 it.